Hi, I'm David Harry, and in this video, I'm going to be testing a Sennheiser MKH60 shotgun microphone with a GoPro Hero 6 Black using a Saramonic Smart Rig to pre amplify and to power the microphone. Okay, so the point of this video then is to test a Sennheiser MKH60 shotgun microphone with the GoPro Hero 6 Black. Now the configuration that I've got is the GoPro 3.5mm Pro mic adapter attached to the 6, which you've got to use to get any type of microphone into the GoPro. But in turn, what I'm doing, because that would never power a phantom powered microphone, which is what the MKH60 is, I'm using a Saramonic Smart Rig. Now that's doing two things in this actual setup. One, it's powering the microphone with phantom power, which is what it requires in order to work. And also I'm using it to gain in order to get a really optimum level going into the GoPro. Now I've tried a number of different microphones on the GoPro and quite Quite often the GoPro doesn't quite optimize itself through the adapter for the microphones but what I found is that I can get a really good sound with any microphone as long as it's got an XLR connector on it and if I put it through the Saramonic first I can then get a really good balance before it goes into the pro uh, the GoPro in which case the GoPro is then doing like you know like less messing around with the audio trying to like you know automatically gain it or limit it so I kind of optimize it before it goes in first I'll also be doing another GoPro 6 video specifically all about the Saramonic so check all up you know check back later for that stuff but anyway what I'm doing right now is just showing or letting you hear an example of the MKH60 mounted in a shock mount on top of the GoPro. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to do a little bit handheld with it as well. So this is now the MKH60 handheld and this will just give us another idea of a configuration to put it in for doing stuff with the GoPro. Now the thing is it is very blustery, I'd kind of underestimated the, uh, the wind today but what it is I've got a Movo WST220 shield on top of the MKH60 so hopefully this is actually knocking out the bulk of the wind which is now really getting quite considerable. Okay yeah so this will give us an idea of what it sounds like handheld unfortunately I'm not using like you know any kind of grip system on this uh, so I've got to just be careful to keep me handling noise to a minimum and the winds really picking up I don't know the GoPro might actually be swaying a bit as well and uh, yeah in fact to tell you what, I, what else I'll do I'll, uh, I'll just do a little moving around with the microphone so I can actually come off like some distance away from the GoPro and still obviously maintain really good audio because the microphone's staying with me now what this would also be good for would be for doing interviews and such uh, maybe even documentary stuff so what you might even want to do you might want to use a GoPro to kind of get into small confined spaces with a really good microphone for doing some dock work and what have you I mean what I'm going to do there'll be other videos in this GoPro 6 range that I'm doing where I'll cover things like you know optimum setups for doing interviews and kind of dock pieces and stuff like that anyway this should be enough of a little piece in order for us to hear and to see exactly how this responds with the MK6, MKH60 handheld. So what I'm going to do now is go indoors and do a couple of more tests indoors with it as well. Okay, so as we can see, I'm indoors now. And I just want to get one thing clear straight away. It's been a day and a half since I did that footage outside. So I've had a little bit of time to be able to watch it and there was something really funky going on with my skin tones. Now, I'd set up the GoPro in fully automatic mode. Now, I never noticed this on the 5 when I used the 5, so this this being the 6, it should be better. Um, but I, yeah, my skin tones look really odd. And at, at points, I was solarizing there as well. Um, now, like I say, I just left the camera in, in automatic mode. And the reason for that is because I'm trying to use this camera in fairly much the same scenario that most people would, and that is automatic. Most people just want to use a GoPro where they just click the record button off and on and then just point the, you know, point it at things. And that's, you know, that that's how I want to use it as well in these videos to, to give people a fair representation of a real-world use of the camera. Now, 
you know, some people may argue and go, but yeah, look, you know, you keep putting all these things on the camera and, you know, and you're bulking the camera out. Well, that's only because I just want to test this and push it as far as possible, as far as its audio abilities are concerned, when you start adding other bits on. And the fact that, like, GoPro themselves have actually come out with a box like this big for doing audio bulks the camera anyway. And, you know, if this camera can do brilliant pictures, just adding the extra little bulk that I've done to it in order to actually increase its audio ability is a small price to pay as far as portability is concerned. So yeah, so basically, all I'm doing is trying to get the most optimized rig together for doing great audio and great picture. Unfortunately, that picture wasn't great. Um, now, I'm just sincerely hoping that right now, it's okay, and it's not doing anything weird in those. Now, what it is, I'm, I'm being lit here by two lights, and I'm using in the region of 5,400 Kelvin, and there's a fair bit of light. So what, ha what I should have here is um, a very clean picture and no funky coloring going on with my skin tones. So yeah, I won't know that until I get, you know, until I get back into the edit and, and watch it. But anyways, yeah, so that's just a, an explanation of what was going on outside and all the rest of it. So getting back to the microphone, and also my little ramble just then obviously gives us a really good example of how the microphone sounds. Now basically what it is, the room that I'm in is quite a small room, and it's got like a little tight reverb sound to it as well. It's not properly soundproofed yet. Um, or, or at least it's not properly deadened for acoustics just yet. So the microphone will be picking that up as well. But like I say, we've already listened to it outside and this is a fair representation of what it sounds like indoors as well. And what I'm doing here, I'm just shooting with my other camera here so we can get a, a, a little look at the, the rig system that I've now built up. And uh, what I've done since actually recording outdoors, I've modified the Saramonic a bit further. What it is, I've, I've adapted the cable end to a TRS so it'll go straight into the GoPro's jack adapter on the, on the actual, uh, the, the mic input unit. And also I have put a cold shoe mount top and bottom as well, so I can directly attach it to the shoe mount on my GoPro case as well. So basically my 6 now, my GoPro 6 is like, like rigged and wired for apt, you know, absolute optimum audio. Now when I say optimum, uh, optimum for what it does right now because i'm hoping that gopro see the sense to doing a firmware update to give more control of external microphones because uh, and i'm sorry to say this and i really really thought gopro would have done something about it but there's a huge problem with the gopro 6 as there was with the gopro 5. And what that is, there is issues with the raw audio. Now the idea is when you record raw audio, what you're meant to be able to do is have a separate audio file and a separate video file. And then when you go into post-production, you marry them together. Now that is not ideal because the best way to do this is have a single file, which has actually got good uncompressed audio already in it. So then you're not having to like resync things in post. But nonetheless, you know, GoPro had decided to give the option of this separate audio file, what they call RAW. Um, anyway, the problem is that file is like massively incompatible with many things. I've tried it now on a number of different device, uh, sorry, a number of different bits of software and whatnot. Uh, me, me video editing software, it'll see the file, but it, it, it just plays it funny because what it is, the file isn't a straight stereo file. Now, the camera system is only able to record two tracks of audio, which is what you would use to record stereo. Now, when you analyze the actual raw file, it's coming up as at least four tracks. I'm not too sure, something else that I use may have seen it as more than four tracks as well. So, there's either something weird in the headers on the file formatting, or the file itself is something like a polywav. Now, the problem with all that is, it's very difficult to get that file to actually sync and work properly with anything. In the past, and you, and I, in fact, I'll leave links in the description below and all the rest of it and something at the end where you can go and see a full-blown version of this problem that I, I actually, you know, reported on with the uh, with the Hero 5. And basically what it means is it makes it very unusable. So what it is, the raw audio, which should be the best option with the least amount of processing and whatnot, 
that should be the best option. But unfortunately, and I'll stop the ramble on that as well, but unfortunately, it's not working. Still, it's exactly the same on the six as it was with the five. And basically, it's a bag of spanners, um, which is English for not very good. Right, so basically, yeah, it's, uh, it's the only option you have is to use the interleaved audio with the video file to get anything decent out of the camera, which is like directly usable straight away without all kinds of weirdo post-production. Now, in that instance, that's the reason why I'm using the Saramonic. So what happens is I have the gain setting inside the camera set to standard, so no plus 20 dB or anything. So what happens here is the Saramonic is being used to get the optimum gain level going in. And what happens with that? The better, the better the signal is as we go into the GoPro, the less amount of messing around with like dynamic processing such as automatic gain control and limiting, the GoPro can kind of get away with doing a bit less of that. Now don't get me wrong, the, the, the internal audio system of the GoPro, especially I think on the 3 Plus was, was quite cool. I never used the 4, um, but the 3 Plus I thought was great because it handled things really well. It did a very good job of pushing and pulling audio signals coming in and kind of matching it quite well. Um, now, like I say, I don't have a problem with them kind of automated systems, but in this scenario, what we're trying to do is get the best possible sound we can. So what I'm doing with the Saramonic and the microphone is trying to get an optimized level going into the GoPro. So then the GoPro is like not messing around as much as what it might have to do. In which case, we don't co we don't start slamming the, the, the you know the the incoming signal into a limiter or into its built-in limitation system and stuff. Anyways, yes, that's just a little bit of like slight tech detail as to what's going on here. And hopefully it's producing a good sound. So all the limitations aside, <laughs> this video has hopefully shown people the versatility of being able to use shotgun mics or powered condenser microphones as well with the GoPro Hero 6. Anyway, there's gonna be a bunch of links at the end. There'll be a bunch of links in my descriptions below. And there's a little bit at the end where I kind of go on about like me, me little, like, little URL website that I've just set up as well, specifically for all my GoPro videos. Okay, hopefully you've enjoyed this video. Maybe you found it entertaining. Maybe it was informative. If so, please consider giving me a thumbs up. If not, give it a thumbs down. Also, you may want to consider subscribing to my channel and clicking on the bell for notifications as well. And what that'll allow you to do is to keep up with all the videos that I do. I do a lot of stuff to do with hardware, software, cameras, microphones, basically go right across the board with tech stuff. But if the only thing that you're interested in that I've been doing is the GoPro stuff, then you may want to consider just checking out my GoPro playlist. And then on top of that, you can actually go directly to all my GoPro videos at w www.goprohero6.co.uk Okay, so the only thing that remains for me to say right now is thank you very much for watching this video. Take care and goodbye now.